You know I have to talk about this. I read a comment on Twitter, and I'm not gonna say who it is because it's an opinion and everybody's entitled to one, myself included. But someone on Twitter said that they were shocked and completely flabbergasted that Nintendo would do something very Nintendo-y for them to do. That's very prone for Nintendo to pull off something like this of releasing uh, something completely contrary to what people were speculating and rumoring and going against the green. And needless to say, they were being very sarcastic. I'm not. They would go on to say that it was very completely crazy and again, shocking that Nintendo was doing something that was very in line with their previous philosophy up until this point. To which I remarked saying, yeah, it is shocking because changing your philosophy as a company is what promotes growth, it's what promotes competition and diversity in the products that you release. Otherwise, there would be so many companies that are still being left in the stone age as far as advancement and research and development. And I gotta be honest, I am completely disappointed with today's announcement of Nintendo releasing a brand new OLED model of the Nintendo Switch. No, it is not the Nintendo Switch Pro that has been long rumored now for I think we're just coming up on about a year now and here's why I'm thoroughly frustrated because I know a lot of people are coming to the defense of Nintendo saying that this promotes incentive for people to upgrade especially if their only switch model right now is the switch Lite, and others saying that there's different options for them to be able to kind of jump into the Nintendo ecosphere Except we're right on the cusp of technology advancing so fast that all of those supposedly rumored pieces of hardware that they could be incorporating into the new Nintendo, such as a new uh, graphics card or processor chip, why couldn't you just wait for that model to then put the OLED screen on there along with a couple of little aesthetical re uh, re refinements to the system as well as the dock itself and then repackage and repurpose it later on, thus giving the entire SKU a brand new, you know, reinvigorating, you know, motivation for people like myself to go out and buy because right now it stands at just being a $50 increment for an OLED screen. An OLED screen that, sure, I'm a huge proponent of OLED technology. Like right now, a beautiful Sony A9 or A10 or AX by the time we get to that point television with OLED technology is my dream TV that I would love to own in the 65 inch scale once me and the girlfriend move in that would be like my main TV to watch TV watch shows movies etc maybe not the most ideal for gaming which then segues into my next point about the OLED screen on the Nintendo Switch is that generally OLED is not exactly the most friendly technology when it comes to gaming because then it promotes burnout for those of you who don't know about OLED, OLED is basically a technology for displays, television screens, video game screens, monitors, etc. Where each individual pixel is individually lit by the back panel. Which means that whenever you see a dark colored item or just black, you know, all up on the screen or on the image, it turns that pixel off. Sure, this could then promote battery life, especially for a handheld console like the Switch. But when you are dealing with an awful lot of bright imagery and constantly changing Im imagery, especially if you happen to be playing a Platinum Dunes game, did I say Platinum Dunes? Especially if you end up playing a Platinum game, that's going to be an issue and can lead into some burn in. Did I say burn out? Burn in <laughs> into the image of the OLED over the course of time. Uh, especially if the proper you know, precautions are not taken in place by Samsung, who is then providing the screen for the Nintendo OLED model. Besides that, here comes the, my biggest problem with this new OLED model is of course, no 4K output, no refinements to performance, no even better battery life than before, no significant change other than that OLED screen, and the removal of the bezel. The screen is now bigger, I think it's about half an inch or about a full inch bigger. We started off with a 6.2, I think we're now at like 7.1 or something like that. And don't get me wrong, from the images and the videos that I have seen promoting this new model, I do like the bezel-less display. It gives it a much sleeker professional look. But when you go as far as to say that the rest of your chassis is, at least internally, 
is not going to be all that different. Sure, there might be some aesthetical differences. The vents are going to be refined a little bit to, you know, decrease the chance of them breaking over the course of time, especially due to overheating. And then, of course, to me, what is probably the be best thing that I that they're adding to this new Switch model, this is how bad it is, I can't even get it out, is this goddamn kickstand. I am super happy, more so than even the OLED display, that they now give it a wide kickstand that can then be adjustable at different angles for your viewing pleasure in tabletop mode that is awesome that was probably my biggest highlight of this new model aside from that you even have the same joy cons inside sure they're gonna come in a sleeker white color but have y'all fixed the drifting you know are y'all still the you know the dk's of the industry the donkey kongs oh no i'm sorry the drift kings Yes, I believe you are. Oh, and they're changing the box. You know, it's not gonna be like this no more. It's gonna be kind of like this, and they're gonna cut back on a little bit of that cardboard because they know that Labo didn't really take off the way that they wanted to. So they're gonna be making the box a lot smaller. So I think it's kind of obvious now that I am not exactly over the moon about this new announcement for the Nintendo Switch OLED model. That is the definitive not pro model that we were all hoping it for it to be now if you couldn't already tell from the box that i'm using here there's one little added incentive that could could get me to want to get that oled model which is that i have the original 2017 model i bought it in 2018 but it's the 2017 SKU that has the slightly weaker processor that doesn't take full advantage of the battery thus giving me the shorter battery life the, this new OLED model is going to have that Dash 1 SKU or model number that then promotes that better battery life and could also be assisted by that OLED display. But only time will tell if those OLED displays, displays are going to end up burning in because of said technology not being the most complimentary with gaming. And besides that, it just irks me that no other things are really being addressed here. Some of the bigger issues with the Switch predominantly that drift on the joy cons that they're retooling and repackaging and reselling and i hear therefore beg the question would people be coming to the defense of this new switch model if we weren't even dealing with nintendo at all and we were dealing with another company like xbox or playstation i want people to really ponder and think about that now, David, you, you you know you're just spitting some cacophony. Who's to say that come October eighth, when this releases simultaneously with Metroid Dread, mind you, are you not going to pick it up? Here's what I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna say never because never say never. There's actually a really good chance I will own that OLED model, but not upon release. I want to see how those screens pan out. <laughs> and on top of that, there is no really broad sense of priority for me to get that new model save for that better battery battery because obviously i have that 2017 system other than that there's still many more upgrades and much more room for improvement over this new model that come 2022 let's hope that we do get that proper switch pro update that's a brand new system with a brand new emphasis on 4k output refined graphics and above all, better gameplay that could take advantage of the system. Because graphics, as awesome as they would be, they're not, you know, the most important thing. But if PS5 and Xbox Series X is teaching me anything, it's the utilization of our time with fast loading speeds from the SSD or being able to just maneuver around the gameplay a whole lot quicker and being able to kind of transport us in different worlds without having to you know notice the little obvious points where there's that invisible loading screen with the elevator or something like that these systems are doing a great job of illustrating that and frankly i'm personally tired of nintendo just resting on the laurels and this new system is just more evident for that to me Thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the new Nintendo Switch OLED model. I almost slipped. I almost literally just said pro. Like and share. Don't like if you didn't like the video. Subscribe for more coming up soon. And until next time, stay humble.